Good evening. Uh, I will be here to translate the English part. My name is Manasse, and I do press and PR at the Goethe Institute Thailand. Lena Tony ก็เป็นเวลาสมควรแล้วนะครับที่จะกล่าวต้อนรับแขกผู้ไม่เกียรติทุกท่านอย่างเป็นทางการผมขอเรียนเชิญดรรัชพรชูช่วยนะครับคณะกรรมการมูลนิธิเจมส์เอวิลทอมสันกล่าวขึ้นเปิดงานต้อนรับแขกที่มาร่วมงานด้วยครับขอเชิญครับผม Good evening also a warm welcome from my side uh, to kick things off I would like to invite Dr. Rajapon Chu Choi on the stage she's the board of trustees of the James H W Thompson Foundation thank you very much สวัสดีค่ะ Um, I'm going to speak English and uh, uh, will be a translator in, in Thai. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm very, very honored to be here on behalf of um, the Board of Trustees of um, the James uh, H.W. Thompson Foundation to welcome all of you to the opening reception of the two wonderful exhibitions at Tim Thompson Art Center today. Um, the first exhibition uh, is a fruitful collaborations between Goethe and Stew and the Jim Thompson Art Center. Uh, Gamina Crew, The Return of the Wonka Disc. Uh, it is uh, co-curated by Anna Katharina Gelber, the curator from Hamburg, Bahnhof Berlin, and uh, Maren Meyer, the director of uh, Goethe in Stew Thailand. We are also very honored to have uh, their presence here with us today. And uh, another exhibition, uh, it's a little bit closer to us, is a work from the archives of Mr. Thompson himself, news from the yesteryear and insight in the James H.W. Thompson Foundation archive. It is uh, curated by Bruno Le Mercier, our senior uh, conservator of uh, the foundation. Uh, ขอกล่าวต้อนรับแขกผู้มีเกียรติทุกท่านที่มาร่วมงานนะคะรู้สึกเป็นเกียรติอย่างยิ่งนะคะในฐานะตัวแทนของมูลนิธินะคะอขอต้อนรับทุกท่านนะคะเกิดงานทิศนิทรรศการก็จะมี2ส่วนนะคะส่วนแรกก็คือเป็นความร่วมมือระหว่างพิพิธภัณฑ์มูลนิธินะคะกับสถาบันเกอร์เต้นะคะแล้วก็ซึ่งงานนี้นะคะก็มีเป็นการร่วมมือกันระหว่างพันธรัฐนะคะนะคะคุณแอนนาแคทเธอรีนาเกเบอร์จากพิพิธภัณฑ์ศิลปะร่วมสมัยฮัมบอกแล้วก็คุณมาเรนีไมเออร์ผู้ในการสถาบันเกอร์เต้นะคะส่วนอีกอีกอีกงานหนึ่งนะคะเป็นนิทรรศการชิ้นที่สองนะคะก็เป็นงานนิทรรศการที่ News from Yesterday ค่ะเป็นงานของพิพิธภัณฑ์อูนิธินะคะซึ่งในงานนี้นะคะนิทรรศการนี้นะคะก็คือเป็นผู้ดําเนินการก็คือคุณบรูโน่เลมเซียค่ะขอบคุณมากค่ะ The two exhibitions are happening at the same time, not uh, by coincidence. Actually, it is uh, juxtaposition uh, that show the very significant uh, scene of uh, Thailand's art and cultural landscape in the 1950s and 1960s. Uh, uh, we have two prominent expert, expert here. James H. W. Thompson and uh, Germanic crew who arrived in Thailand after World War II. Uh, while Thompson was uh, with the U.S. Army before establishing the Thai Silk Company in Thailand, crew traveled through Asia as a war correspondent and later became a director of the Oriental Hotel in Bangkok. You can see that uh, it's very interesting uh, landscape that uh, both of them were together in Bangkok. And uh, they were even once a uh, partner on the project uh, to renovate the Oriental Hotel, but the collaboration didn't really um, materialize. Mm -hmm. um, the two exhibitions actually offer us um, the, the pictures of those days when um, the New World uh, Order was uh, getting established. Uh, very interesting. ค่ะก็งานทั้งงานนิทรรศการนี้นะคะก็คือเป็นการจัดวางร่วมกันของสองนิทรรศการนะคะที่พูดถึงภูมิทัศน์ทางการเมืองของประเทศไทยในยุค1950ถึง1960นะคะซึ่งทั้งสองท่านนะคะคุณจิมทอมสันนะคะแล้วก็คุณครูเดินแกมายเนอร์ครูเนี่ยก็เดินทางมาที่ประเทศไทยหลังสงครามโลกครั้งที่สองนะคะ
ก็จะเป็นการเปรียบเทียบให้เห็นระหว่างภูมิทัศน์ทางการเมืองนะคะของทั้งสองทางที่ต่อมาเนี่ยก็ได้มีโอกาสมาร่วมงานกันนะคะในซึ่งในภายหลังก่อนหน้านี้เนี่ยคุณจิมก็คืออย่างที่ทราบกันก็คือเคยเป็นอดีตเจ้าหน้าที่ข่าวกรองนะคะแล้วก็มาเปิดธุรกิจภาคใหม่ที่ประเทศไทยนะคะแล้วก็ส่วนคุณคุณแกไมเนอร์เนี่ยต่อมาก็มาเดินทางมาที่ประเทศไทยนะคะแล้วก็เป็นเจ้าหน้าที่บริหารของโรงแรมโอเอนเตนค่ะขอบคุณค่ะ um, at the James H W Thompson Foundation We have really a privilege to own the house of Mr. Thompson along with his collection and archive. Uh, this is really the first exhibition uh, at Jim Thompson Art Center that we use solely the uh, material from the archive, uh, thanks to our curator and conservator Bruno here. Um, I just uh, want to express uh, a little bit further that in the future, The foundation would like to invite artists, uh, scholar, to work with the archives, the collection materials, and also the house to expand our knowledge and understanding of our uh, recent history even better. Uh, perhaps every year or every two years, we would like to do such a thing. And uh, as we all know that if we don't know the past, uh, we cannot understand really the present. And it would be very difficult to project our future. Thank you very much. ก็ทางวันนี้รู้สึกเป็นเกียรติอย่างยิ่งนะคะที่ได้เก็บรักษานะคะสมทรัพย์สมบัติทรัพย์สินของคุณจิมทอมสันนะคะแล้วก็นี่ก็เป็นงานแรกที่เราได้นําเปิดกรุแล้วก็นําสิ่งที่อยู่ในหอจดหมายเหตุมานําเสนอให้ทุกท่านนะคะขอขอบพระคุณผู้มีส่วนร่วมทุกท่านที่ช่วยจัดงานครั้งนี้นะคะขอบคุณดรราชพรชูช่วยนะครับที่กล่าวทักทายแขกคู่ไม่เกียรติงาน Thank you very much, Dr. Rajapon, for this uh, well introduction into the two very interesting exhibitions that we are here tonight for. สำหรับงานเปิดตัวนิทรรศการของจีนทอมสันอาร์เซนเตอร์ในวันนี้นะครับมีถึงสองนิทรรศการด้วยกันนะครับ As you're all well aware, this is not the opening of one exhibition but two. สำหรับงานนิทรรศการแรกนะครับจะเปิดตัวในชื่อ New Form Yesteryear and Insight. Into the Jim S. W. Thompson Foundation Archive, นะครับโดยคุณบูโน่เลอร์มิเซียนะครับเป็นพันธรัตน์ผู้จัดทํานิทรรศการนี้ขึ้นมานะครับเพื่อให้ทุกคนเข้าใจนิทรรศการนี้มากขึ้นนะครับผมขอเรียนเชิญคุณบูโน่นะครับกล่าวแนะนํานิทรรศการนี้ได้ครับ To help us understand the first exhibition of tonight, news from yesteryear and insight into the James H. W. Thompson Foundation's archive is Bruno Le Mercier. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for coming today. Such a big number. Um, the show about the archive of the foundation was initially programmed in 2021. The pandemic decided otherwise, and the <clears throat> the new building eventually opened last November with an exhibitions program for the whole year 2022. I think I will read. This is better for the pronunciation. So, in prize of photography, it was worth to wait and carry out this show together with the German cruise exhibition. I think people will enjoy a lot about the printed uh, photography on all the walls. Uh, I'm trying to anticipate the question of the audience because we have a limited time together. And uh, I organize my talk as a Q&A session. is a way to to go faster and maybe to have a clearer view of this sometimes difficult to explain uh, archive situation. So about the archive, um, until recently, archive were not an integral part of the foundation. So people say, why, why, why now? I think uh, the essential point is. The foundation didn't have any place to store the archive and to start the job of a archive library. So, with this new building, just opposite to our room, you have the archive room. It looks like a little bunker outside, and uh, this is a place where we could move all the documents. So, this is a very essential to the work. 
uh, over the years, so what's happened to these documents in the past? Over the years, all documents were kept safely in a room at the company's executive office. That means uh, it started at Surimong number nine shop and then moved to Soy 93 in Banjak. And uh, though they were kept safely, but uh, documents in uh, documents in a cabinet, it's not archived because they are not listed. Nobody knows really what in the archive. So over the years, all documents um, <coughs> were stored safely. I mean, but it became relevant to the history of the foundation to develop the archive library, and moreover to reward those who perpetuate to this day the Thompson legacy. Uh, without some uh, people, we won't be there, and the company or the foundation would not exist. And I think we have to reward these people with uh, library, with archive, allowing people to make research, and very important to assure the transmission of the history of the foundation. I give you an example uh, of the problem of the transmission. Uh, in two, two, 2006 was the 100th anniversary of Jim, and the directors of the company decided to to start a project to produce a oral history. So it's about two. I counted 13 people. They were interviewed for each one about 30 minutes. Now we only have maybe five people remaining. So that means what they said in 2006 is recorded. And the more and more, the people who knew Jim Thompson, who participated to the company or to the foundation, they are getting very old and uh, I'm very pleased to, to talk to my boss, Mr. William Booth, and uh, sometimes to Kunsurin, who still works uh, as a director at the company board. Uh, Kunsurin, uh, I think he started to work for Jim Thompson in 1960, early 1960, and Kun Booth 1964. So we have two immense memory of the company and what's going on also with the foundation. So we have to protect what they know and we have to, to go on. So uh, things were a bit complicated. That's why the archive were not so easy to collect and to organize. Uh, how things went back in the day. Uh, when Thompson disappeared in March 1967, the company's management and Thompson relatives spared no effort in looking for crucial documents to handle the case. What will happen to the company, to the Thai house, to the collection? According to the Thai law, a missing person is not legally dead until seven years have elapsed from the time of their disappearance. So there was a big gap of seven years for the family and the company and the relative to organize what to do. And it was not so easy. It's maybe another exhibition uh, necessary to explain to that. So uh, that means that seven years, the foundation couldn't be established before 1974. That means legally the foundation couldn't archive anything before that year. So, what do we have? Uh, if you look <coughs> in the archive, you find mostly legal administrative documents, like the property deeds. It's so important to get all those documents when you have a, a property like the house. We have minutes of the board meetings. We have inventories of the art collection. And uh, this point, uh, was a starting point, in fact, to work seriously about the archive, because uh, when uh, Eric Booth asked me to come to join the foundation 10 years ago, there were inventories, but incomplete, not workable, uh, no photo database, or 
you cannot find anything at the right place in the house, so we had to start the, the work from scratch. And uh, the reason for that is we wanted to implement uh, a restoration program for the collection. We started with the painting, so then porcelain, everything. But for this, we, you need a really well, I should say, digitized uh, database. We have about 1,600 objects in the house. So this is uh, one big part of the archive now. And we have all the photographs. Uh, that's so strange to, to see the, the boxes full of snapshots. You don't know who did that. You don't, need, you don't know exactly when they were done. And it's so it's a lot of work to, to investigate. And we have, of course, books. Jim Thompson had books in, uh, in his study. They are not always in a good uh, condition because of climate, you know. But we can preserve them uh, not too badly. And we have some of these interesting catalogs or strange books uh, on display in the collection. So, um, I should say, unfortunately, we have very few personal documents from Thompson. I just explained that we got a gap of seven years, and during these seven years, uh, nobody was really sure of the outcome of the property of the collection. It's happened that uh, the family come and take them with them the belongings. It's normal. Then the family will then uh, will do many, <coughs> I should say, large, generous donation to the foundation. Without the family, we couldn't keep the house in a good functioning uh, during these seven years. So all in all, that's what we have in the archives. And I um, should say what we don't have. And what we don't have is textile, no silk. And there is a confusion between the company, which is doing the silk business, um, the foundation who is created to preserve the collection and the house. So we have absolutely no silk, no textile. That doesn't mean we don't do some show in the future, but uh, people get frustrated. I cannot answer much about textiles. And another question, often people ask me, are the archive open to public? I said, um, not now. Because um, documents are generally available to researchers who make a request to the foundation. It's a bit, a bit formal. However, the archiving process is just beginning. Uh, we are not able to organize an archival research library at this time. Um, we have the project to have, uh, in two years' time, maybe another exhibition about the archive in, co in cooperation with artists. This must be done uh, at that time. The library should be operating. So what have we discovered? Uh, we have discovered interesting material dating back to Jim Thompson era. No spectacular dis discovery. Uh, I think uh, many questions about the mysteries of Thompson, nothing about that. But we do have in early interviews, snapshots, letters on memorabilia that bring you fresh which is very important, a fresh, more casual perspective to information already published on Jim Thompson's story. Uh, I insist on the, about the fresh thing because Thompson has uh, an image of legendary American, and uh, we always see the same photograph, the same comments, the same names, see the name dropping around him. You know. We found something different, uh, more lively. And uh, it's quite exciting, so that's why uh, we decided to, to have an exhibition. So um, this exhibition is not only like, uh, you know, to please ourselves. Uh, we, we had uh, in the past an average number of 
800, 900 people a day at the foundation and the museum. These people had no, these people have no exhibition, no, nothing to explain Jim's biography. So this exhibition also is intended to this large audience of visitors, as well to researchers who question all the time the historical importance of Thompson. That's, there's some kind of controversy about that. So <clears throat> now we can, we talk about the archive, maybe we can go straight. How many minutes do I have now? It's, uh, it's going good. Uh, about the news of yesteryear. Uh, so yesteryear, we understand news because we never know this archive before. So for us, it's really news. And uh, we play with that word. And uh, I just realized that I read two days ago that somebody from the AmCham <laughs> used the same word yesteryear. And uh, so, OK, coincidence. But this is an insight of our archive. This is very important to, to have uh, an idea of what we have in our bunker now. So w what we show, we show, um, we show a lot of photographs. We show a lot of uh, small pieces of paper, but we have also a very good team who printed did a marvelous job for printing documents, and also a lot of, uh, should say, information uh, supported by comments, leaflet, QR codes. So um, that's it. So press clipping with early interview of Thompson, copies of letter of his family, photos of the numerous merry trips up country with friends. This is very important for Jim for Jim to have. A, a circle of friends, and to go a almost on uh, every weekend, going to Ayutthaya, Cambodian border, uh, to the north and northeast. So he has always with him a very truthful uh, group of people, which are uh, shown in this exhibition. Uh, so we can de we can imagine that they have a flair for action, and. Um, Something uh, very interesting, they, when they traveled to the Northeast uh, in the early 50s or late 40s, you know, the road was impracticable and the, the Mitra path was not built yet, the, the highway from the American. And so they have to use the Land Rover from the USIS, you know, the United States uh, Information Service. They can travel uh, faster to Korat. I say faster, with two, four days. Okay, for that. Um, so we try to preserve the archival character of the exhibition. Uh, small size documents, burnout photos, what to do. Showing the archive is a refreshing setup, thanks to the team who arranged the displays in a creative way. I, w I would like to they highlight the power of printing work. I mean, the printed work is very fabulous for this exhibition. And I would like to thank them very much for what they did. And they have a much uh, creative, uh, archive-oriented uh, project with us. Um, I'm uh, forgetting about the army of uh, interns. We have maybe. <laughs> 20 of them, I don't know that. Uh, they were so helpful for the Lamps Media job. So we organized the exhibition in several sections, all interlinked but not following a strict linear narrative because the foundation does not have the material to make up for all the gaps in the story. So we have four walls and we have four teams. I think. So wall number one uh, tends to be biographical, and we name it the American years. So we start from America, US Army, OSS, 
which is in Thailand, of course. And then in a short view about setting up the silk venture and the construction of the Thai style house. And uh, the background, I hope uh, we keep the background what uh, Achan Chep called the Cold War vicissitudes. Um, because the Thai politics were also a burden for Jim for all those years. And also, um, I showed two letters uh, on tablets. So two letters, one is dated from August 1948. It's a letter from his sister, to his sister Eleanor, 1948. Is doing a trip to the northeast to look for weavers, and is uh, doing this trip with uh, his friend from the Free Lao and the Free Thai. You will see the details. You will see the details uh, in the exhibition. I don't want to to go further, but he's talking about German cruel as well in this letter. And you know, Jimmy sometimes is very nasty, <laughs> so, <laughs> so they just got you know, quarrel about the project, and it's, uh, you've, it's quite funny anyway. <laughs> and the second tablet uh, is a letter dated February 1967. So um, I should say it's nearly the end, February 67. It will disappear in March 67. And very strangely, this letter comes from his uh, old ex-employer, I should say, he, as he worked in a, an architect in New York. Uh, he worked for the Holden firm, and he, he has a letter from him. He replied to him, and this is like a, it's like, like a summary of all those years in Thailand. And there's, he looked a bit disenchanted. That's, uh, the tone is not so, you know, uh, enjoyable. But, He's not so so sad, and he's so happy with the new shop he built for the on Surivon Road, on number nine, the new shop for the headquarters. So he's talking quite uh, positively about the silk business and about the project that he wanted to to make for the future. In fact, because uh, behind the shop you have another building that he intended to rent for profit. So this is the wall number one, which is a bit yeah, thick with information. And uh, I'm escaping uh, difficult, uh, you know, his good relationship with the people from Bankrua, which is very fundamental to also his work in Thailand. So this is on the wall, uh, you can see that. There is another wall with um, visuals about uh, the Thai house drawing paintings that we never show to the public. I, have, I think I have to go faster. I spend too much time to giving details. And the wall number three is uh, about the traveling exhibition. We never knew that Thompson in 1958 organized a traveling exhibition to Honolulu. Uh, we knew about the Thai uh, the Arts of Thailand exhibition in 1960, which is a very important exhibition because all the great collectors from Thailand participate to it. But for the first one in Honolulu 1958, we didn't know. And we found two photographs and articles. We are so happy on the wall as well. Um, so wall number four. It's the final uh, for me. Uh, it's about <clears throat> about the Thai Silk, how Thompson found the Thai Silk Company. And we have photographs with the uh, first partners. We have documents, mirrorabilia. And um, how should I say that? We have the white elephant uh, decoration on the wall that uh, he received in 1962. And um, as a closing, you know, we have uh, always the celebrities, the name dropping I was talking about. We have photograph of Jim or without Jim, with friends or nice people around him. So we also uh, 
did a nice job in printing this photograph for the photo uh, exhibition. So um, I cannot finish my speech without thanking all the grateful. Uh, we are very grateful to donors because people gave sometimes documents, uh, personal documents, and sometimes anonymously. So uh, of course his family, but some friends like uh, David Rockland, we have a book uh, with his photograph, and many others they send letters, or sometimes they just send to the house, Jim Thompson house, they send some, some old photographs that we are very happy to keep. So thank you everyone for listening to me. Is it fine? Okay. ขอบคุณคุณบรูโนะครับที่ได้มาแนะนํางานงานนิทรรศการนี้นะครับขอบคุณมากครับส่วนนิทรรศการที่ 2 Yes, also from my side, thank you very much Kun Bruno for this uh, comprehensive overview. And we have prepared two mics now for the next uh, curators of Germain Cruel, the return of the avant-gardists, uh, Anna Katharina Gavas and Marin Niemeyer. Savadika, I also leave my mask, <laughs> sorry. Savadika, guten tag, um, hello, um, welcome. Dear Excellencies, dear Ambassador of Finland, dear Ambassador of Germany, uh, dear board members of Jim Thompson, um, it's a very special moment for me because a dream comes true, an exhibition which was long time planned is now reality. Um, and at the same time, it's my farewell as a director of the Goethe Institute Thailand. It's the last exhibition and you can imagine how I feel. Next week I will leave and I see so many familiar faces here um, so I'm, I'm really touched. But I like to tell you what happened when I, when I heard six years ago that I have, uh, that I want to go to Bangkok and that uh, I will be head of the Goethe Institute Thailand. A friend of mine, Inka Grevel Engelmann, told me, then you really have to, to make a research about German coal. She is there. Uh, historian, photographic art historian at the, she was a museum, um, Pinakothek der Moderne in Munich. And then I started the research and I was deeply impressed about this woman. She was a role model in the 20s. She traveled through the whole world. Katharina will later tell us a little bit more about German Kuhl. She was a war photographer. She lived in Paris, in Moscow, in Berlin. She was a good friend of many, many wives in the, of this time. André Marot um, was a very close friend of her, for example. Um, yeah, and then, and then, and then she came to Thailand after the war. And what, what was incredible, that she changed her profession. She became the first female general manager of Mandarin Oriental. Mandarin Oriental in this time was a very, in a very bad constitution. So it was almost a ruin. And then she started together with Jim Thompson. We just heard a lot of, um, a lot of his life from Bruno. Then she started to run the Oriental and to, uh, to start the bamboo bar, the legendary bamboo bar. I had my first cocktail there when I came to Bangkok. Um, and it, that was not the only thing. She made the bamboo bar the place to be in Bangkok. So she was some kind of queen of the nightlife and of the society, of the expat society in these days. 
I was wondering how can I realize this exhibition and then I met many, many researchers and it was very difficult and it needed incredible six years <laughs> that we now can open this exhibition. So that the big, a big, big, big wish came true from me. So I wanted not to make a long speech, I just wanted to say we have some surprise for you later. <laughs> a surprise which is related to Mandarin Oriental. Um, as so stay, even if we have some more uh, talks. Um, and also I wanted to say a big thank you. The exhibition is only possible uh, because the archive of the German cruel heritage at Volkwang Museum Essen gave us the possibilities to show reprints. As you know, the tropical conditions are very, very hard, so it was not possible to bring the original photos here. Um, but they gave it us, and this was great. Um, I also wanted to thank you, the Jim Thompson Art Center, without Kritja, Eric Booth, um, Jean, Jean Paul Boyer, it will, would be not possible to realize this. And I also want to thank you, Katarina, as my co curator, um, because she had the right, the right view on German cool. <laughs> yeah, so um, what should I say? Um, I like also to thank you, all the Bangkok audience, the Bangkok cultural scene, all the Bangkok and Thailand cultural partners for your, for your wonderful cooperation in the last six years. It was a pleasure and I fell in love with Southeast Asia like German cool. Okay. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Maren. It's very, very touching and I feel very honored to be on board with you on your last project here in Bangkok before you're leaving. And um, yeah, we've known each other since a long, long time and worked together where I also met my husband, which <laughs> is also nice. And uh, yeah, I'd like to thank you, of course. I would like to thank um, Raja Ponchuchai for the introduction, also um, Manasse and Tam, thank you so much. And also, of course, um, yeah, um, Kritia Gavivong, Eric Booth, um, Jean-Michel Baudelet, to be, um, that uh, they invited us. Also, um, Bruno Le Messier for this beautiful partner exhibition, which is a lovely coincidence. Um, and um, yeah, I'm going to give a short introduction into German Kurt's life, and I hope um, it's okay that I read it a little bit because I don't want to forget anything. And uh, because uh, German Kurt was indeed an exceptional um, artist with an unusual curriculum vita, but her biography also, of course, reflects an unusual century and unusual times, which um, Bruno also already said, and, uh, and also um, Raja Pohn, you also said, it's, um, it's really it's, um, a, a, a witness of a specific time, a specific century, and um, with numerous worldwide geopolitical um, upheavals, often abrupt social um, changes, and above all, um, the social and power um, political shifts and the resulting ecological and economic um, inequalities today are rooted in the time in which German Kohl um, was thoroughly politically engaged as an activist, as a, um, an artist, as a journalist, as a hotel manager as well. And she lived, um, as we all know, in, now in Europe, in South America, in um, Africa, and in Asia. And this exhibition um, thus not only follows um, the view or the gaze of an artist, but also we also follow a restless traveler um, who takes us to places um, that are not usually brought together by historiography. And um, 
and we experience an artist who equally visualized um, the, in her work the beauty of industrial plants, but also um, the um, overwhelming power, which is really exceptional. I, I hope you can see it in her um, works as well. And um, yeah, she was born in 1897 in um, Posen, which was then part of Prussia, is today part of Poland. And she first studied photography with um, Frank Eugene in Munich. And um, she was distancing her quite soon from this picturalizing romantic style, which um, Eugene um, Frank um, at the time was teaching. And um, quickly developed her own style with a more um, abstract, the more uh, cooler styles of this. Uh, roaring 1920s new um, artistic styles. Um, and during her time in Munich, German Kroll had become involved in a socialist, um, a communist, even an anarchist uh, activism scene. And this was at the age of 20. And she was even expelled from Bavaria, moved um, to Moscow, and was even imprisoned in Moscow. And when she came back to Germany, um, she opened her first uh, pho photo studio in Berlin and then moved to Paris. And Paris was really um, not only Berlin, the Roaring Twenties, and Berlin, the golden uh, time of really exciting, let's say, the dance on the volcano between the two world wars. And she moved in this time to Paris and met all these exciting people like André Marot, but she already was also friends of Walter Benjamin, um, of a lot of intellectuals. And um, in Paris, she eventually became this avant-garde photographer we know her for. She, she moved um, to Paris from um, the Netherlands, where she was starting with this industrial photography which for the first time she published then in Paris. And this is also very interesting about her work that she very, very, at a very early um, age um, learned or found for herself the medium of publications, like exhibitions in print, which is also very avant-gardistic for that time. And uh, yeah, she published a groundbreaking portfolio called Metal. We have some works um, from this portfolio in the exhibition, which is until today um, uh, an acclaimed avant-gardistic um, part of, of photography history. And uh, yeah, it was, it's because, I mean, today nobody can imagine this, but it, the very um, important part of it was the technical development of handheld cameras. You can handheld cameras and go with them through the streets. You can, you can um, go on the Tour FL and you can really walk with it through the streets. And this was revolutionizing photography history. And um, yeah, and also driven by her uh, hunger for freedom and democracy, she then um, took photographs for the resistance movement for France Libre and went to um, Brazil, she went to Brazzaville in Africa, she um, followed the by then general later president uh, Charles de Gaulle, she witnessed um, the so-called D-Day in the Normandy. I, I believe, Bruno, you're from Norm Normandy, yes. <laughs> and um, she also was there when um, de Gaulle and Churchill went to Paris, when uh, Paris was liberated. So she became a war correspondent. Um, and um, uh, and um, she also, at the end of the Second World War, she also published a very touching reportage about the um, liberation of one of the um, German concentration camps in Weihingen, which we also have upstairs. And um, yeah, and subsequently, she made herself sent as war correspondent to Asia. She first only wanted to stay for a short time. She wanted to also take a holiday in, in Bangkok, and which become from that time on um, a 20 year stay, which she really enjoyed. And then um, in this time, you can also read some of her articles there. For example, she wrote um, a famous article, which is called Error in Laos, which was um, 
which was talking about the, her observations about the French coming back to get their former colony, colonies back, like Cambodia, Laos, Laos and Vietnam. And um, she then, um, yeah, I think it was in 1947, she met um, Jim Thompson, and they were deciding to um, renovate the Hotel um, Oriental. And this became, for her next 20 years, her home and her home base. But she also, during that time, time, took photographies. And I think it's really interesting if you compare them with her earlier, more experimental ones. For example, the Watt Anon and the photos of the Tour Eiffel, they really look um, quite similar in a way. You have the same play with perspectives, with, um, with contrasts, with um, dancing uh, lines also with um, which, which is um, very impressive about her early photos, there is no horizon, things are dancing. And also dance is something which became not only dancing perspectives, but also dancers, and dance became one of her motives through all of her life. Yeah, and um, also what is very interesting in Thailand, one of um, Germaine Kroll's very first um, photography jobs was the cremination of King Ananda, and um, which was, of, of course, um, also showing uh, pictures of Bumipol, which I think is very um, interesting, this closeness, how she uh, um, photographed it. I think this is a sign of um, respect on, and trust. No? It's OK? To, am I too? To, Okay. No, because I'm not I'm not doing the manuscript, but I, I really want to thank the interpreter. Thank you so yes, much. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Very, very good That's interpreter. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so um and this was when German Cole decided to stay in the region as we already mentioned and to open the hotel uh, Mandarin Oriental. We are not quite sure how how much she worked together with um Jim Thompson. And we are also not quite sure why she stopped working after 20 years for the Mandarin. Yeah, there, there are existing some rumors that they, they had a kind of hate laugh together. Yeah. And uh, we, are, we are very happy to bring them again together <laughs> tonight. Yeah, I think this will be one of the questions, why bringing together these two, um, two figures of the uh, mid 20th century and um, also their strange uh, disappearance at the same, same time. Um, yeah, I think, uh, is there anything I should say again? I mean, I hope you can really enjoy seeing mm -hmm. this I'm, because there are hundreds and thousands of photos and I, I had the really bitter um, uh, task to choose only 70 of the thousands and many and many and many photographies, and I was yeah. I think we saw 1,000 photos, and and we, and, we spent yeah. hours and hours together in the archive in Essen, and yeah. we were just really, really impressed how many there are existing. Yeah. Yes, and I mean, I'm I was also um, thinking about German for many years to do an exhibition with her when I was there. Are some other really interesting figures in this time, like, um, for example, the German painter Walter Spies, whom I was showing, who went to Indonesia. It's really an interesting time, and these are interesting biographies that were born in this area. So, but I wanted to maybe um, s uh, find an end now. And so after she um, res resigned from the Mandarin Oriental, she shortly went back to Europe. And there was, she was honored, she got exhibitions, etc. But she soon found out that she didn't feel European anymore, neither culturally nor, nor socially. And then she went back to Asia, and she went back to India. And she was living in the north of India and eventually became a Buddhist and stayed there for many, many years until she had to go back to Germany for health reasons. She got a stroke and she had to go back to Germany where she was um, dying shortly after. So she died in 1985. And I only wanted to say that, yes, as mentioned, Books are very interesting for her. We have uh, we have this this books. Also, we have um, 
we ending the exhibition with her last book and also The Grave, which is in Wetzlar, which yes, is... I visited just recently in April, The Grave. Uh, she is buried with her sister Beate and her mother Albertina. And that was for me very surprising that now she has a grave of honor uh, since, since four or five months. And recently, uh, in January, and Paris uh, Street was named after German cool. So she has a kind of revival, and hopefully also in Bangkok. That is our, our goal. So maybe we finish, yeah, maybe we finish the talk, and then do yeah. we do a Q&A. Because, um, yes, I mean, as mentioned, I did the selection for this um, photos, which was really, really tough. but. Then um, Maren added the grave, and I think she can tell about this a little bit later. I just wanted to also have the chance to say my thank you, as um, dance and rhythm and dynamics are really a part of um, German Kult's um, work. I think it's really um, something which is similar with um, with Katia Gaverong, with Maren Niemeyer, with everybody from the... Um, from the Jim Thompson Art Center, from the Goethe Institute, which is really, really, it's not even being dynamic and fast, but also taking courage to, to do all this. And this is what I'm really, really grateful of. And I would like to thank us, Maren Niemeyer again, and the Goethe Institute for um, inviting me to do this, which is also a dream, dream exhibition for me. Um, for Kritia Gavevong, who's watching from uh, Facebook. Hi, <laughs> Giap. And um, also uh, um, Jean-Michel Baudry. I think Eric Booth is also watching. Um, and I would like to thank you for the hospitality, for the, um, hospitality and for the support and making this project um, possible. I hope you can see me. <laughs> And um, of course, also the Museum Folkwang for providing us with the f uh, photographs for the collaboration, the really lovely collaboration. They made this possible even though they have their um, jubilee year and they have a lot of work to do. So I'm really, really grateful that they made this happen. Um, yeah, of course, I would like to uh, uh, thank Pim, Pasak Pak, and Supernormal for the like always, amazing installation um, and uh, making the exhibition possible, even last minute, very, very, uh, really grateful. Uh, the Goethe Institute and the staff involved, also the um, many, many um, interns which are working for the Goethe Institute as well, the, the interns of the, um, of the Jim Thompson Art Center, and I um, also I want to um, also and specifically thank um, Neil, uh, <laughs> and I hope uh, it's Tara Chanan Pong Panic um, who helped me from early in the morning until really late in the night. And you will be a really really good curator. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, thank you Katarina. <laughs> I'd be um, I'd be very interested to know if in your research for, for the work on Germain Kroll, did she have any relationship with the very few female photographers during the war, like Lee Miller, for example? Yes. Or was she very much alone? She met Giselle Freud and she met Lee Miller. Um, that's true, but there is no, no photographs and stories, but um, I think Lee Miller was mentioned her, and I'd, I had the honor uh, to do an interview with Giselle Freud in uh, 1905 or six, And then she mentioned all the German photographers in Paris in this time. And yeah, they, they, I cannot say that they were friends, but they worked together and they had, re and they, yeah, and this was a kind of very special female community. <laughs> Okay, I mean, if there are no questions at the moment, we are all around, Bruno and, and Katharina and me, so uh, you will have the possibilities, if you like, 
to ask us our, everything we, we are knowing. I think it's a really interesting um, adventure to start going deeper into the history also of Cold War history here in Thailand through these figures. Jim Thompson and this um, history which is really entangling so many things like um, silk, uh, de dealing with silk and also traveling and this interconnections between the US and Thailand. Yeah, I think Thompson, uh, he became a model for many foreigners who wanted to settle in Bangkok because it's like a success story from a handicraft that nobody really want to, to do anymore in the country. So it's like very exciting moment when, uh, when you discover after the war, I think the people want to change also a lot of uh, ideas in their mind, something like that. So that's just subjective anyway. Uh, the archive uh, just pushed me to be more objective, not to be too romantic about uh, Thompson. But uh, in some way, I, doing all this work with a nice team, uh, we, we said that they are fantastic because from the printing job and the selection we had, they make something very lively, very fresh, it's so new. And um, we suddenly found that uh, Thompson likes to be with friends and we could have named this exhibition Gyms and Friends, something like that. It's very relaxing sometimes. If you blur all the political background, the stories and the drama, because there are many dramas in, the, in this story, but there is a very, very lively uh, love for action, discover the country. This is something very positive. I mean, uh, compared to what we can read sometimes in articles. Or, you know, this is my opinion, just for my own opinion. It's, it's not so complete because Still, Thompson has a lot of mystery. Um, I explained that the family keep with them all the personal documents. And that family was, uh, a suffered many drama. I mean, uh, murders, uh, divorces, and this is a family not so, you know, there's an old picture of Jim when he's a kid, the family is all united. Uh, something like this uh, is gone after a few years, so. Um, the family want to keep this uh, by themselves because it's too personal. Uh, and the many names, uh, you know, there, there are people from the gentry, you know, very important people from the East Coast. So they have very important network of, uh, I mean, social uh, network, and uh, maybe it's too compromising or not polite, and you know, they are very uh, inside. They say Yeploy people. It's very, very conservative, should say. <laughs> yeah, I hope you will enjoy um, the two exhibitions coming together. Mm -hmm. And also, I think, uh, to conclude, it's really interesting that um, the two of them were real cosmopolitics. So we have some ambassadors here. I'm, I'm sorry that I didn't greet them properly, but I think we can't even say German cool. Was she German? Was she, was she Polish? And was she French? Was she an Asian, like uh, Thai or whatever. So it's, um, and I hope that you will enjoy traveling with her around the world mm -hmm. and trying to find out more about the mysteries behind these two very convivial figures, but in the end, not revealing yeah, all the secrets. We found strange things like uh, the photo with this German crew stamp. Officially, German and Jim don't talk each other for maybe 20 years. But we have a photo of the collection mm -hmm. with the stamp German Krull. And this object was purchased in 1962, so that's a very confusing archive. That's a, they don't always tell uh, you know, the truth. They just can meet together. And, <laughs> and please tell your friend, and I already um, promised you a little surprise. Uh, the surprise is related to Jim Thompson and Jim and Krul because both founded Mandarin Oriental. And in this moment, I want to thank you, Mandarin Oriental, for special sponsoring. So.
we have a tombola. <laughs> and uh, Maren will be what in Germany we say, the Glücksfee. Yes. <laughs> so we have all your names. And the second prize is a dinner at the terrace of Mandarin Oriental Hotel. Now, drums. Wow, wow. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> the winner is Rajapon Chuche. <laughs> okay. No? You want to give it to someone else? <laughs> we can be, be making it. Okay. <laughs> The next time we go together. <laughs> I take green. <laughs> no. Ah. 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 <laughs> you. And the main prize is I leave it out, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is one, a one night stay in the Mandarin Oriental Hotel. <laughs> okay, congratulations, and again, thank you to the Mandarin Oriental uh, for this nice idea of cooperation. Okay, and I think now we just wish you a wonderful opening evening. And we are around here, and if you have any question, and I think we will do a photo call, yeah. the last one, and yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So much. Thank you, Giap, also. Stop. Thank Stop. you, Jean-Michel, Eric. Thank you. 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 Thank And concluding, maybe a group picture with all. And I would also, uh, I would also like to invite the German ambassador on stage for a group photo. ขอเชิญแขกวิเปียร์มีเกียรตินะครับเชิญชมกันเทศกาลที่ชั้น 3 ได้เลยนะครับที่แกลเลอรี่ 1 และแกลเลอรี่ 3 2 นะครับผม